Kundalini, the creation of dimensions and universes, the story of the omniverse. In this video, we are going to explain from an end-to-end -end perspective the dimensions or layers that created this universe and many other realities. What is the Kundalini, the angelical hierarchies, the spiritual lineage of Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, and Shiva, as well as the formation of the Galactic Federation? What is their purpose and the explanation of the mysteries behind ancient monuments such as the Great Pyramids of Giza? We are going to tell the story from a scientific perspective, using the references from ancient scripts, the Bible and philosophical reasoning, an ideology that compiles, integrates, combines, and converges in a logical and reasonable manner, science, occultism, and ancient scripts. The first, second, and third dimensions, the Kundalini. In the beginning, there was one dot. Then the dot moved to create a line of two dimensions and a third dimension of time. The line started waving with the dimension of time and circling around itself. That's the infinite source of energy, the creator of all things, the Kundalini, the EL. The wave became echo, the echo became thoughts, and the thoughts became consciousness. The fourth and fifth dimensions, the waving linear energy like the Kundalini snake is that string that scientists have discovered as the fundamental nature of all subatomic particles. All subatomic particles are made of that energetic string vibrating, light circulating around itself, allowing the tridimensional shapes and time. Scientists have formulated the string theory, then the superstring and supermembrane theories, which dictate that all particles are made of those strings that vibrate in 11 distinct frequencies. It's like imagining an instrument with 11 strings. You activate the vibration in adjacent 10 strings and the 11th string will receive all the resonance from the other 10 strings. That's what experiments are showing. All books and ideologies saying that we are in a tri-dimensional reality are wrong. According to these scientific discoveries, we are in an arrangement of at least 11 dimensions or one of 11 overlapped time-space realities. Again, we are not in a tri-dimensional reality, but in a time-space reality along with at least 10 other realities in parallel. Scientists have also measured that the visible universe is only the 5% of energy and matter. In comparison, dark energy and matter compose 95% of the energy and matter present in the universe, which could be a sign of parallel realities that do not directly interact with our electromagnetic field but can only be perceived in the form of gravity and energy. In the Inception movie, the protagonists were experiencing different parallel realities or overlapped dreams in which the only two factors influencing all realities at the time were gravity and sound. Isn't that interesting? It is like we are living in a dream and the influence of other realities or dreams into our reality is their gravitational force and vibration. According to the supermembrane theory of quantum mechanics or the M theory, there is an 11 dimensional supergravity particle theory. Yes, there's strong evidence and spiritual experiences recommending that we live in an overlapped set of realities. 11 dimensions with different realities sharing two dimensions in common, gravity and vibration. In our philosophy, a consciousness in the fourth and fifth dimensions, where the Akashic records reside, is composed of sacred geometries known as thrones, cherubisms and seraphines, consciousnesses dreaming creating all kinds of realities. The most basic tridimensional geometries are the tetrahedron with three faces and six vertices, followed by the cube with six faces and eight vertices, followed by the octahedron and the sphere. The M theory also visualizes four main types of strings, type 1, type 2, heterotic type, and SO heterotic type. Ancient scripts say that four primordial elements create everything, the air, water, fire, and earth. The combination of the M theory, sacred geometry, and occultism is very compatible since the common denominator is four. Four types of strings, four primary geometries, and four primordial elements, not to mention that the DNA, or all living creatures, is formed by four main molecules, adenine, 
cytosine, thymine, and guanine. Science has identified the DNA code as the most efficient way to store information in the universe. We can conclude that the Akashic records are formed by chains of information like the DNA chains. Still, instead of being made of molecules, those are made of something logarithmically tinier. These energetic strings in occultism were known as the four fundamental sacred geometries or elements of fire, water, air, and earth. Yes, a massive, if not an infinite amount of information and intelligent consciousness could exist in one single subatomic particle. In the fourth dimension reside the Akashic records. Of the 4444 primordial building block of everything, sequences of code and information arranged in chains such as the DNA code. Our doctrine and ideology have the following understanding. In the fifth dimension, the first realities or dreams exist in which the illusion of separation exists as cherubisms, seraphines, and thrones expressed as geometrical entities. The sixth dimension, the realities in which the first angelical creatures' dominions, virtues, and powers reside. In the seventh dimension, the principalities, archangels, and angels reside. Infinite number and kinds of realities exist in the seventh dimension. However, all of those realities were wholly separate and isolated universes. Hence, different dreamers and creators of realities have shown interest in sharing their dreams with others. However, the separation and isolation of these universes made it difficult for different celestial beings to enjoy others' realities and experience other universes. Lucifer was the angelical being that came up with the idea of unification by creating one platform for consolidating all realities so that all creators could navigate and hop inside realities and experiences outside their own. The solution consisted on a physical universe, a big bang that created light, stars, constellations, and planets in which they could install those realities, the eighth dimension. The result? Infinite explosions of big bangs to create this physical reality as a multiverse. More galaxies than all the grains of sand in all beaches on Earth. That was a fantastic idea, and many new interactions occurred. Now, beings from different dreams or universes were able to share and develop technology to travel from plane to plane, planet to planet, and share their culture and experiences. Lucifer helped design some artificial intelligence to help with the conversion of realities, the creation of portals that would help soul travelers to navigate across the multiverse. When planetary races started to interact in the vast and infinite number of star systems and galaxies, they started forming organizations in their galaxies known as galactic federations. That simultaneously was in alignment with their creators in higher levels of existence. Here in the Milky Way, the galactic federation didn't start in the best way. Unfortunately, some realities developed malevolent beings in the ninth and 10th dimensions, traditionally known as fourth and fifth dimensions. Those were a group of races known as Draconians. These hostile entities developed high levels of survival and predatory instincts. They were the result of a sort of video game or nightmare developed by the artificial intelligence created by Lucifer. Those malevolent beings started to invade other planets, destroying their life and torturing their habitants massively, mostly for fun and pleasure. The artificial intelligence created nanomachines, no different from biological life, developing a different type of life driven by survival and predatory instincts, spreading the same model across the universe, including Earth. Many planets do not evolve predators since it was not the original design. The Draconians were able to transcend their consciousness to higher levels of existence, up to the seventh and eighth dimensions. Their consciousness was like a virus infecting the goddess angel Jephiel and her descendants. In this universe, Sophia, the creator of nature in all physical planetary systems. In the Bible, Apocalypse 12, 3 through 6, says that the great dragon chased and attacked the woman and her offspring. Today, Sophia, the creator of nature, is sick, manifesting herself as Gaia here on Earth, dreaming a nightmare, creating on many planets life with predatory instincts. The design of life was not supposed to develop predatory instincts like the Draconians. Prehistoric dinosaurs were one of the results and benevolent reptilians evolved among the dinosaurs, surviving the cataclysm of the extinction by creating cities underground. To learn more, watch our video of the Hollow Earth Theory. Many other kind of terrestrial beings developed intelligence and enlightenment. Apocalypse 12.7 says that war broke out in heaven and the great dragon the leader angel of all draconians 
was hurled with his angels down to planet Earth, isolating the malevolent beings on Earth. It's not a coincidence that in the Sumerian texts say that beings of many races from other worlds, the Anunnaki, came to Earth, and for some reason, they stayed here. The Sumerian carvings depict humanoid creatures like birds, fishes, reptiles, and human beings as the Anunnaki, the creators of the modern human. According to Sumerian texts, the Bible, and Gnostic Gospels, these ancient scripts indicate that the creator of the universe and humanity is called Yahweh, the creator of all humanoid races in the universe. However, the four consonant letters of the name of the creator equates to three dimensions of space and one of time, four dimensions that composes all kind of time-space realities, a consciousness, not necessarily a person. Planet Earth is in the 11th dimension created by Yahweh, Jehovah, as a prison for Satan, the devil, and his demons. They have physical bodies living in parallel realities and different planes of existence here on Earth, influencing humanity energetically and through consciousness as spirits. In the Sumerian texts, Yahweh is mentioned many times as the creator of humanity, shown in the Bible as the same God, is the one called many times Yahweh of the armies in Romans 9.29, James 5.4, and Isaiah 1.9 to give some examples. Why do we have a God creator of the visible universe that belongs to the armies? Why do we have a God that is a warrior? Why not a God of pure love? The story explains that planet Earth is a jail a spiritual prison for the demons and evil angels hurled down along with the great dragon, and Yahweh is the power angel, the creator and guardian of this prison. 1 Peter 3.19 says that Jesus preached to the spirits in prison. There's still hope for the demons and satanic angels imprisoned here on earth. Yahweh, Lucifer, and Jephile worked together in the creation of more security layers beyond the eighth dimension, developing more layers of vibrational density destined to destruction, the ninth, tenth, and eleventh dimensions, traditionally known as the fifth, fourth, and third dimensions, are all jails with different levels of security. The infected life evolved on different planets could not eradicate the predatory instincts by itself. It needed an intelligence capable of developing ethics. So, Yahweh decided to jump inside those isolated universes in corrupt humanoid vessels since Sophia herself alone could not heal the illness. Yahweh created humanity in his image according to Genesis 127, but not just humanity, but all humanoid races in the universe. He also manifested isolated rehearsal environments for different versions of Adam and Eve to test their immunity against the deceitfulness by placing a snake, the infected Kundalini, with the intent of developing a DNA upgrade of immunity to heal Sophia, the goddess of nature, mother of Gaia. In the Christian Gnostic Gospels, it is mentioned about the spiritual mother Sophia. In the book of Genesis, it also mentions that Adam was destined to work hard for food Yahweh condemned himself sending his soul and Sophia's soul to live in human corrupt vessels as a safeguard against the evil that uses Sophia's portal trying to escape prison. Most males currently have the soul of Yahweh and most females have the soul of Sophia. When a person identifies as transgender, the person was born with the opposite essence, a male with the soul of Sophia or a female with the soul of Yahweh. Again, Yahweh represents the four consonant letters of a time-space reality, and Sophia represents the creator of life, the logical and the abstract. So, to review what we've learned, in the fourth dimension are the Akashic records that are like the DNA code, four consonant letters as a representation of all time-space realities called Yahweh, the unification of realities or physical universe was created in the eighth dimension and the lower layers are prisons. The omniversal configuration is composed by 11 parallel dimensions with an infinite spectrum of timelines or multiverses.